In just over seven days, we are going to be playing our first game of 2023, and that means that it's time to take a look at the schedule and make some predictions about where we think we might end up at the end of the 2023 spring split. So let's talk some TSM. That is right, everybody. We have League of Legends, TSM League of Legends to be specific, coming up in a little over a week. And, you know, the more time that I've spent on this team, uh, the more confidence I have gained, mostly because I think there are pieces that people are, are very much overlooking. I still have my questions about Boogie, but this episode is going to be, you know, looking at the schedule, seeing where, <laughs> excuse me, I think we're going to win. Um, and giving you guys my final prediction for the spring split standings and you know where we do. And I think I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised uh, with with what my predictions are. It's not great, but it definitely could be worse. Um, so I feel like I'm doing a good job at picking kind of maybe I might be a little optimistic, but I don't think I'm too out of the realm of possibility. So let's just jump into these games. First game, most important game, and again, I'm sorry, I, I finally got some meds, you know, I'm still dealing with this sickness, it's a pain in the butt, but you know, whatever, we, we, we move on and we work on, right, um, first game is, they did push everything back two hours, so instead of us starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, we are now starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, and we're playing Immortals, which I think this game is crucial, I think we have to win this game, I think we're the better team from top to bottom, I, I, if you've seen my power rankings for our players, I think, um, you know, I think Solo is is better than Revenge, you know, and, and down the line, I think Kenvi is the only one that's going to be a major problem for us. Um, and I think that if we can kind of contain Kenvi, then I think that we can actually win through Neo and through Maple uh, in this in this one. So I think that that's what we do. And we'll dive deeper into these, you know, once it's game week, uh, specifically next week. But continuing on Friday, um, you know, we will play Team Liquid. Uh, I think, guys, we're going up against two literal world champions. Uh, you know, Summit was the former LCS MVP, regardless of the fact that, you know, I think that Maple's better than Harry right now, and I think that Yon and, and Neo are maybe pretty close in terms of talent-wise. I just think the rest of that team is just too strong, uh, and I have us losing here. We go on to the next week, the first week of February, where we play Evil Geniuses. Not much to analyze here, unless if that team is just really struggling to get Someday and FBI, uh, you know, uh, acclimated to the rest of the team, there's no chance that we, we should even really have more than, outside of some early game strats uh, against this team, Evil Geniuses, I still have as the best team in the LCS. Continuing on, we have 100 Thieves, and this is the first upset that I have for us where I have us winning, because I think 100 Thieves have a lot of issues that a lot of people are talking about. I think they're a good team, and I think they will be a very good team, but in their first couple weeks, it's going to take them time, right? Tenacity has never, at, well, he's played one game at an LCS level, <coughs> excuse me, and it was at, at a lock-in game that didn't matter, so, you know, I, you can throw that out the window. He's basically getting his first start, right? Closer is playing on a brand new team, essentially. Even though he stayed on 100 Thieves, everybody else around him is gone. All the people he was comfortable with, gone. So I think that's an issue. Bjergsen is going to have to be the anchor for this team. And I think he can be, but I don't think his skill level right now is that drastically different from Maple's. I think he's better, obviously. But, I, you know, how much of a difference? I, I can't really say it's, it's a, you know, a, a, that big of a gap, we'll just say, right? I think Doublelift and Busio are going to be the issue. I think it's going to take them time to come together. I think, you know, Doublelift is almost 30 years old. That's not to say that he's not still going to be pretty good, because I'm sure he will be. And I know that Busio is good, too. But it takes time to meld. And with Neo and Chime, yes, they need time as well, but both of them have experience on the LCS level. Busio does not, and neither of them are dealing with a player with the ego of Doublelift. So I think in the early weeks... 100 Thieves are going to struggle. I think they're going to overlook TSM. And I think that we take them out, uh, making us 2-2 two and two, uh, through the first two weeks. Now, here is where 
we kind of start heading through a bit of a rough patch, okay? We get Cloud9, I just don't, unless if Diplex is just costing them games and, and Blabber is playing like Crabber and the mid-jungle duo is just not working for Cloud9, like at all, I, I just don't see us winning this game. I think Fudge and their bot lane are just way too strong, so, you know, at this point, uh, it's it, it, here comes a slide. CLG, again, they've been playing together uh, for a while. I think, you know, we still have, you know, two pretty major pieces that we're getting acclimated. And while I don't think Contracts is the best jungler in the LCS by any stretch, right? Like, he's pretty far down the totem pole. I do think he's significantly better than Boogie right now. And at this point, we'll know if, at, at this point, this is the, I, I think, the start of where we might be seeing Sven Skarin. If Sven Skarin comes in, I, I could see us potentially winning this game, but... With Boogie, unless if he really shows out, I, I see us losing this one uh, as well. You know, dropping, well, you know, two in a row at this point. Luckily, we get a little reprieve on Wednesday uh, of our first Super Week. Uh, as a reminder, we do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday during Super Week, which is going to be great because that means like three weeks from now, we got we got games. Can't believe it. Very excited. But, um... TSM versus Golden Guardians. I have us winning this game. I actually think Golden Guardians are not very good. Unless if Gory really shows out and River finds his form again, Licorice finds his form again, you know, Stixa is is really, you know, upped by who he, even though I think who he's definitely the best player on that team. I, I still just don't think that they're going to really come together. Um, and uh, I got us pulling this one out, ending our, our little skid there, uh, going to three and four. But then the rest of the... Uh, the rest of the Super Week doesn't go well. FlyQuest, by this point, they will have all been playing together. Speak is going to see it as a revenge game. Unless if he ends his face off, FlyQuest win this game against us. Then we get Dignitas, okay? And I have us finishing 4-5, and five, actually, during this time period. Because I think Dignitas is super overrated. Listen, I think Jensen's good. I think Santorin is really good. I think our team with Santorin, by the way, instead of Boogie... I think we are right outside that top five, maybe pushing for it. But, you know, I think that um, Arma is on and off. You know, I think that their bot lane is probably the worst in the LCS. And I think that that's going to cost them. I think I think Neo and Chime really take over these games against Dignitas. And I think Maple and Solo are able to, you know, keep, you know, uh, the solo lanes and, and, and <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> goodness, keep them intact. It's going to come down again to the jungle. If Boogie can just be there, just not lose us the game, I think Neo and Chime just take over and I think we win this game. So <coughs> we finish the first round, Robin, <coughs> excuse me, Oof, four and five. And that's our second upset. And again, I mean, we could easily also be two and seven at this point, right? Like, I really think the only teams that we're for sure better than in my mind are Immortals and Golden Guardians, and we could still even lose those games. You know, I mean, there's a world where we're zero and nine, but I, I just don't. <coughs> Excuse me, gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. I think that there's a world where that's pretty unlikely. So that's okay. We move on to the second half here, and I'm gonna breeze through these real quick. Um. I actually have us getting to 500 here, beating CLG this time. I think at this point, everybody knows what they are. And while I don't think we're necessarily better, I think this is another upset opportunity uh, because I do think CLG are prone to dropping games that they kind of just get lulled to sleep in. And I think that this is one of them. Cloud9, we lose. Sorry, guys. Evil Geniuses, we lose. Sorry, guys. Team Liquid, we lose. Sorry, guys. There's our three-game skid. Luckily, then, we run into Immortals in Week 7. By this point, I think this team is in shambles. I think Parth is looking at young players at this point and starting to bring some people up because the rest of the team is not performing. And I think TSM take this game to end their skid, uh, getting us to 6-8 and eight at this point. I also think that we win against Golden Guardians again, which gets us to 7-8. and eight. I know that's a lot. I think 7 wins is, is kind of our goal. And I think we hit it here, to be honest with you. Again, with only two real upsets, I think the, the other five games that I've picked are pretty realistic. And I do think that we can sweep against Immortals and Golden Guardians. So we head into Super Week, and this is where it gets tough. We get Hunter Thieves, then we get Dignitas, and then we end the split with FlyQuest. We lose to Hunter Thieves at this one. 
At this point, Bjorkson and Double Lift are rolling. I think Tenacity and Busio have figured themselves out, and I think Closer has really found a way to come together with Bjorkson, which is, you know, I mean, that's a deadly duo when the when the two of them are, are on their game. So I think we lose this one pretty badly, honestly. But then we get Dignitas again, and yet again, I'm going to pick us to win against Dignitas. I do think we can sweep against them. While I do have Dignitas higher up in my power rankings, that's mostly because I think their top side is pretty strong. At this point, if they've lost a couple games because Spawn and uh, Ignar aren't getting it done, then they might be switching some people out. Like, you know, I, I think Dignitas are going to win a lot of games this year, but I, for some reason, just think our strength is their weakness. And while Santorin is, you know, unbelievable, I just don't think that he can carry on a team with Jensen and Armut right now. Uh, I, I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, <coughs> so. You know, I think that this is where we get our eighth win of the year. And then we lose to FlyQuest. So, overall, I have us at 8-10 and 10 with uh, a likely last, you know, potentially last uh, playoff spot. I think, you know, right in that 6-7-8 range, just depending on how everybody else does. I could easily see us losing, you know, uh, three more of those games and, and finishing at 5-13 and 13 again. Um, I think there's a, a, a catastrophe world where we go, you know, two and 16 or three and 15. Um, and I think if this team comes together and catches people in the wrong weeks, there's a world where we finish 10 and eight or nine and nine. But I think that is like the height. I think nine and nine realistically is as good as it gets for us. And I think that this seven and 11, eight and 10 range is the more likely option. But I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know because we're a week away and I want to see what your guys' predictions are. So let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll catch you guys on the next one.